Hello, it's Scott Manley here. After SpaceX's high-profile mission to deliver astronauts to the space station, they got back to work on their Starlink network. And the latest Starlink uh, launch was pretty spectacular, primarily because all of the cameras that usually fail during these launches actually worked correctly. I'm guessing they're working on their communications technology, which is a good sign for somebody trying to create a global communications network. First up, during the landing on the automatic drone ship, the camera remained stable. Now, this was a night landing at sea, and in the distance you'll see there's clouds. This is the image on the left, and as the engines light up, you can see those clouds, which are miles and miles away, are being illuminated by the flare of this engine, which is out of shot. This is, of course, coming down at hundreds of miles an hour and basically trying to slow to an exact stop at the deck by carefully feathering the brakes. And yeah, they managed to maintain signal all the way down. Yeah, we got a, a lot of debris on the camera, but... All we get was the landing, we get to see the engines being saved and the last dregs of flammables coming out the bottom. And it's not quite on centre as some of those boosters are, but it's great to actually see that from a drone ship, the ship that is hundreds of miles out in the Atlantic. But you know by now, drone ship landings are kind of old hat. We've seen them an awful lot. What we haven't seen is an uninterrupted view of the satellite, the Starlink satellite deployment sequence. Now you can see here, the upper stage is rotating, uh, kind of pitching downwards from our point of view. The way the Starlink satellites deploy is designed to minimize the amount of hardware needed. So you have this big stack of satellites that are kind of laid on top of each other like a deck of cards. There are 60 satellites in this stack. As the spacecraft begins this slow rotation, that means there's a slight velocity difference and you know centripetal force or centrifugal force, depending upon how you want to think about it, is going to want to pull that stack apart. So up the side, there is this stiffening rod or this rod that holds the satellite in place. And when that pops out, the satellites now drift free with slightly different velocities. They will bump into each other a little and they might have to reorient themselves. There will be a period where the people on the ground are trying to figure out which satellite is which in, the, in space so that they can com correctly command them. But... I mean, this is a really beautiful piece of engineering here because it's all about minimizing the amount of mass spent on the deployment system so that you can have as many satellites as possible in a stack. And if you're willing to accept that your satellites might bump into each other and handle that, then yeah, 60 satellites on the spacecraft compared to say OneWeb's much more conventional system which clustered 36 satellites around a core. I believe the last two launches they did, they only put 34 satellites on. But um, yeah, these are launched at much lower cadence. There would be several minutes between each separation to make sure the spacecraft or the newly deployed satellites didn't bump into each other. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to see any more launches from OneWeb. They're, they're essentially bankrupt and the satellites, nobody wants to buy them because they really depend on there being hundreds and they are so far from having a complete deployment able to cover the globe that there's limited uses to which it can be put, especially when you consider that uh, anyone looking at this is going to be looking at Starlink as a viable option. Anyway, coming back to Starlink, SpaceX released a bit of video which got every space nerd talking because this is a camera inside the fairings watching the deployment while the second stage of the Falcon 9 is still firing and you can see it flying up the middle off to the left. But there's a lot to see in this footage. I mean, it's obviously amazing to see this point of view. It's beautiful. All the textures and the exhaust are amazing, but there's cool information to find here. Now, the first time we actually saw footage from fairings in space was actually because there was somebody in the Caribbean that was you know, on the beach and he found a giant piece of SpaceX fairing. And on that, they found a GoPro in a special housing. So he took it out of the housing, sent that off to SpaceX, and they were able to get the images off the camera. And then they published this fantastic video to you know, to YouTube. So you get to see the fairings kind of spinning around in space and falling back to Earth. That, I think, at the top of the image, I think that's the upper stage engine firing. It's the brightest thing there. 
uh, except for the sun, which is about to come into frame. And I think the sun is probably brighter than the second stage. So yeah, this is kind of beautiful. It goes on for a couple of minutes and it's set to the, the waltz of the Blue Danube. Now this is a much older fairing, it's much simpler, there, you can see the acoustic tiles on the interior that protect the payload from the sonic environment, there's some ducting that runs up the side from the payload, or sorry, the, the fairing umbilical, but you know, that's it. Then we have this footage from 2018 from the PAS satellite launch, and the thing to note here I guess is on the left now there's three uh, you know, compressed gas bottles here, this is probably gas that's used for the reaction control thrusters because they want to control the descent so they need to get the attitude correct so it falls down like a surfboard rather than just flipping around out of control. You can also see some rigging for the parachute recovery system and if you look at the payload of course you can see it's sitting on top of the rocket but the um, engine is the engine flare is definitely highly overexposed. The next fairing video we have is from the Arabsat 6A launch and again of course you get to see the upper stage fly by, it's a different environment, the sun is from behind and the whole thing of course does a complete backflip and you see the second stage disappearing off into the distance in the other direction. Now I want you to again note the acoustic panelling on the interior of this fairing because this fairing was the first ones to be successfully recovered and reused. Again, this during the separation you have exposure problems but you do get to see the outline and get to see the, a beautiful image of the second uh, stage Merlin engine shooting up the middle there. But yeah, when they went to reuse this the acoustic panelling had been removed, so this was the second Starlink mission in November 2019. Again, this is another example of the Starlink satellites being designed for a rougher environment than most satellites. So yeah, they don't need the extra protection that the acoustic shielding offers. And finally, in July, we had the STP mission on the Falcon Heavy. And look how much space is left in that fairing there. This was a test mission, which meant the fairing was released at much higher velocities and altitudes than the fairings are usually deployed. So the best part about this video is the fairing performed its re-entry maneuver and we got to watch the re-entry looking back into the plasma stream. And of course, this is an absolutely beautiful video. Uh, I wouldn't take the colours as being accurate because they probably remove the infrared filter, but yeah, again, you know, some great images from inside fairings. So let's look back at the new video and see what we can see. Well, obviously there's none of the acoustic panelling here. Uh, over on the left you can see a bright light. That is presumably the light for the camera on the other half of the fairing. These two fairings are essentially identical and they lock together to produce the entire fairing that encloses the upper uh, stage payload. Up the top you can see one of the pneumatic pistons which will push the payload halves apart. SpaceX makes a big thing about using mechanical systems to separate their payloads rather than pyrotechnics because they can test the mechanical systems repeatedly. In the middle we have these three pressure vessels for compressed gas and a something that's covered by probably a thermal blanket which I think that's probably control gear because there's uh, a lot of lines that go in and out of that. Remember the fairings are practically spaceships of their own, they have to perform this manoeuvring in space and then fly themselves back to a position where they can get caught by the ships. If you look at the front here, there's a pressurized line and electrical cabling that comes out of the front and then splits up to feed these three, three yellowish ports. I'm pretty sure that those are reaction control thrusters fed by cold gas. There's another set of thrusters at the back, but uh, we can also see during some of the recovery photos, such as this one by Jack Bayer, that the recovery engineers cover up those ports with tape to stop any water or debris ingressing into the thrusters. And so these um, bundles behind the uh, gas tanks, I think those are the parachutes. And if you look, there's actually white lines that run down and there's some kinks in them. I think those are actually the parachute lines and those will connect to anchor points with uh, some control capability to, so that they can actually steer the parachutes and land the fairings where they need to go. Okay, so now let's let this play forwards. Watch again at the top the pneumatic piston as the stages separate or as the fairings separate, these will push apart. Do you see that? Beautiful, and they're still hanging out there. 
And I just want to pause it here because you can see the limb of the Earth reflected in the edge of that Starlink stack. Isn't that beautiful? Now, the plume behind it, I'm not clear just how much of this was illumination from the sun and how much is illumination from the engine. They had launched about an hour after dark and at some point it probably flew into sunlight, but um, some of this illumination might come from the engine. I'd have to actually do a bit more math on it. Either way, it's beautiful. I also wanted to uh, draw your attention to this cylindrical shaped object at the back. I think this is part of the parachute deployment system. This is a drogue chute mortar. So since we're inside a fairing, it's protecting everything behind it from airflow. So if you have a parachute that has to deploy from here, it has to be thrown out beyond the range at which the fairing is messing up the airflow. So that will fire it back, uh, it'll catch the airflow, and then it'll pull the rest of the parachute out, and then of course it'll deploy like a wing. So we fall down next to it, and you can catch a glimpse of the engine there, blowing out that exhaust. If you look at the bottom of the fairing straight down, you can see the exhaust starts hitting the fairing. So if you look carefully, the rotation of the fairing actually flips around. Initially, it pitches outwards from the top because we're looking down. And then suddenly when it hits that, the exhaust flips the rotation and it starts rotating the opposite direction. And finally, we end up looking down towards the earth, which is still you know, night. And I have to play this again because there's stuff that I missed. There's a Starlink stack, obviously. I think that's about, you know, 14 feet away, uh, you know, four or five meters. So watch the bottom of the fairing looking on the right side. Watch as it wobbles in and out because that's held together mechanically and then given a kick. The whole thing wobbles back and forth initially. Again, you see the plume hitting it and reversing the rotation there. And as the fairing starts to point the other way, it looks straight back into the exhaust. And there's a black area there because that is the area of the exhaust that is being shielded by the payload fairing structure. So it looks like you're looking down into this black hole in amongst a bunch of clouds. And there's just one more photo. If you look in this one, you can see that there is an orange glow around the edge there. That is where the exhaust is impinging on the other side of the fairing and it's heating up. Normally when you're at the upper stage, the exhaust expands out so quickly it cools down and you can't really see it. But when it hits into something, you're going to see the orange or yellow glow as the as its uh, you know pressure is enhanced. Now, on a completely different note, SpaceX is trying to work with astronomers to address the various complaints of Starlink satellites being essentially everywhere. You know, the, Star the Starlink satellites aren't going to stop launching, but they are getting some technical improvements. DarkSat didn't work as well as they would like. Uh, the black paint didn't really reduce the magnitude very much, and it resulted in the satellite starting to heat up more than they liked. Visor uh, Sat is their new trick where it's going to try and shield the satellite. They are going to adjust the orbit raising maneuver to... Um, you know, try to minimize the reflections from the solar array because during orbit raising, their magnitudes are many, many times brighter. And that is just a consequence of being in a lower orbit and taking an orientation to work with the solar panels and allow the engines to fire to push them into the higher orbits. That being said, even at the final orbit, they're probably still going to be about sixth magnitude and there will be a lot of them. And for telescopes such as the Vera Rubin telescope, they are going to have Starlink satellites showing up in maybe one in ten frames. And they're going to have to remove those pixels from their data set. It's not just the pixels that are illuminated, but it's so bright it will actually... Um, infect, it'll spread to neighboring pixels. So they, there will be software required to identify these satellite traces and make sure that they don't make it into anyone's uh, astronomical data. And this Saturday, we'll also see the first launch of a Starlink rideshare mission where they remove a couple of the Starlink satellites and put on other rideshare payloads on top. In this case, they're carrying some imaging satellites for Planet Labs. So these satellites will go into lower than normal orbits. They'll have to work to raise their orbits, but they are getting a great deal probably. Most estimates put the cost of launching the six satellites between two Starlink launches at $6 million. For comparison, if they were to do this on a Rocket Lab rocket, they would probably be paying $30 to $40 million for the same service. And who knows, maybe we'll get some nice images from this launch. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.